Hello. <clears throat> Welcome to the stream. Tonight we are playing Broken Sword 2 Remastered on PC. Um, we'll be starting a brand new game. Seeing if I can remember how to get out of the first room initially. So let's see how we do. Professor Oubier's house. Looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans. An appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching the story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I have a bad feeling about this. There were only three things I didn't like about spiders. The way they looked, the way they moved, and the fact that they lived on the same planet as me. This spider was big, mean, and hairy, and definitely not a native of Europe. I glanced over the books, vaguely hoping to find a copy of how to deal with poisonous spiders while tied to a chair. No such luck. but. I noticed one corner of the bookcase was supported by a loose block of wood. Maybe I'd been a little heavy-handed, but it was a question of survival. Of course, I was still tied to a chair in a burning house with no means of escape. Mighty bound, our hero was free. Now, I had to deal with that fire. The rope was shredded and no possible... The rope was... Sh the rope was shredded. Inside, I... Normally, I didn't drink. Ew. Disgusting. Not only did the... I drunk in... 
I drunk it. In the drawer was a small decorated pot. Nice couple. That dart was sharper than a mosquito. There was something short. It was the worm from the bottle of tequila. a stylish little canvas number containing a lipstick, a handwritten note, and a pair of nylon panties with a large love heart emblazoned across the front. It occurred to me that Nico's tastes must have really changed while I was away. Well, they could be useful. pot contained a key. It was the box that spider had crawled from. There was no pressure in the siphon. I guess it was out of gas. As I released the lock, some... That cylinder was hot. I couldn't pick it up with my bare hands. The panties I'd found in Nico... Cylinder gave out. What? Now I had one pri. With a well aimed squirt of his soda fountain, our unshakable heroes. Now it was time to. The cabinet was already open. The cabinet contained what looked like a burst cylinder. I guess I had no business reading the note, but I figured it might give me a clue to what Nico was involved in. It was from Andre Lavano, the history student Nico had known at college. The letter was sentimental mush, and revealed that the exotic lingerie, as he called it, was a gift from him. It gave his telephone number. Lavano figured himself as a rival for Nico's affections, but I couldn't believe that that creep was in the running. The house key didn't fit into the keyhole. I wasn't going to burn myself on that red-hot doorknob, and it wasn't the time for subtlety.
I'd found a piece of newspaper folded in two. It referred to a forthcoming eclipse of the sun. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be visible from Europe. The best place to view the eclipse would be Mexico. Much as I disliked him, Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? Look, I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Andre? You better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. The door was locked. I didn't fancy my chance. I wasn't looking forward, but he was my only... There was no sign of Lavender when I got to the cafe. I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. The man at the next table looked somehow familiar. Pardon me, but don't I know you? Huh? You were here the, the day I found the catacombs. I was. Ah, uh, yes. I remember you. Yeah. Are you still in the police force? No, not anymore. I'm a man of leisure. And what brings you back to Paris? My girlfriend. What it is to be young and in love when you share a bottle of wine with me. Hey, listen, I'd love to, but I need to keep a clear head. Oh, my company isn't good enough for you. Why did you leave the police? I was forced to retire. The golden handshake. Only in my case, it was more copper than gold. How come? I was made a scapegoat to cover up the department's inefficiencies. Have you ever heard of a Professor Oubier? No, monsieur. I don't recall the name. Well, apparently he's an expert on Mayan art and history. A little out of my field of experience, monsieur. If he'd been a serial killer or a sodomite, I might have been able to help. It was a small silver flask from which the man was topping up his glass. Garçon. He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. Hey, you. Well, I'd like a cup of coffee if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman. Un café. Thanks. 
What does that guy keep pouring out of his flask? Absinthe. Absinthe? I thought that was highly dangerous and outlawed in France. It is. Don't look at me. I didn't sell it to him. Do you know a guy called André Lobino? Oui. I know him. What of him? I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No. I have not seen him today. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here. The nutty professor and the movie star. If Oubier's wife was a movie star, how come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. Her stage name was Carol Climax. She died in suspicious circumstances. How did Oubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and they wrote a tight alibi. Why would an eminent public figure like Oubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? Besides, people like him always get off. Do you know that man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. Look at this. A poison dart. Ah, oui. we? Sure. It's the real thing. Knock my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Romantic. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. That's all. Thank you. Well, well, this is a surprise, Georgie. I wouldn't normally call you, but Nico's in trouble, Andre, deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Oubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her, and he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I had no choice. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger, and we have to work together. So, well, how can I help? Nico needed to speak to Ubier about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nico told me to guard it with my life. Oh, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh, my God. You mean I could be in danger, too? What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. Where did Nico get the stone? I'm not sure I should tell you. Oh, you should. It was something to do with smuggling. Why didn't Nico take the stone to Ubier? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. Do you think I don't care what happens to Nicole? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break, but I kept that thought to myself. Tell me about your friend Ubier. He's more of a professional acquaintance than a friend. I see. So you don't really know him at all? No, I don't. Does Ubier employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think this is, Andre? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. It's got more backbone than you. You think you're amusing, don't you? What can you tell me about this pot? Mm, South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank. The Glees Gallery. See you later. Goodbye, Georgie.
I've had enough of your games, Kala. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent the stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. We'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk. Do you miss being a gendarme? <sighs> yes, of course I do. When I wore that uniform, I commanded the respect. Not anymore. I grabbed the flask, a highly potent... Now I had another lead. I could either go back to Ubier's house or visit the Glees Gallery. The Glees Gallery had style and class, but very few customers. Are you Mr. Glees, the owner? Good God, no. Uh, then I guess that must be him over there, right? Your powers of deductive. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Certainly, sir. I'd be most happy to oblige. You're English? These days, one prefers to think of oneself as European. Uh, sure. Whatever you say. And how precisely may one assist you, sir? What I really wanted to ask you about was a black stone. A black stone? Yeah, it's a Mayan artifact, about as big as my hand. No, sir, one doesn't get much call for black stones. If it's Mayan artifacts you're interested in, I have some rather exquisite pots. Yeah, I noticed. I've already got one of those. Who's that guy over there? That's Mr. Lane, sir, the critic. I'm hoping he'll give the gallery a favorable write-up. One has to be so patient with these critics, lure them in with the correct bait, watch for a bite, and play them like a fish. Well, he's certainly drinking like one. How come that Lane guy is so rude? It seems to be a standard requirement for critics. Well, he doesn't want to talk to me. If I was you, I'd give him a wide berth, sir. That suits me. I wouldn't want to get too close to him anyhow. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Of course. His name is synonymous with Mayan art. A number of these artifacts were supplied by Oubier himself. Do you believe the story that Oubier murdered his wife? If it was true, who can blame him? She was an opportunist tramp. Well, that's what I heard. Have you seen any of Oubier's wife's films? Only one. Believe me, I was appalled, shocked, disgusted, and repulsed. Well, you sure got your money's worth. Last time I went to the movies, I wasn't even titillated. I suppose you have an import license for these relics? Of course. But that's not my problem, sir. The professor arranges all the shipping. We simply collect the items from the docks. Could you tell me which docks Professor Ubier uses to import the artifacts? Good God, no. I can't possibly reveal my commercial secrets. 
Do you get many Central American Indians in here? And there's her, and this is Paris. Central America is several thousand kilometers southwest of here, straight across the Atlantic Ocean and turn left. You can't miss it. Well, as it happens, I saw some Central American Indians this very morning. Tourists, sir. Paris is full of them at this time of year. I found this news story referring to a total eclipse of the sun. Really, sir? Well, well, fascinating. <laughs> yeah, you see, this guy's sarcasm amuses me. I'd like your opinion on this part. Interesting. Would sir be interested in selling the article? That depends. How much would you give me for it? 300? Possible 325? I'll think about it. Okay, we've got nothing else to say to that guy. So we've got to talk to this guy over here. Would you show give me your opinion pot. on this part, sir? Hmm, yes. Very rapouche. Rapouche? Hideous. What the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> 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 I'm going to talk to him you about it. You smashed my pot. Certainly, Quality. it was not only worthless, it was ugly and offensive. To you, maybe. <laughs> Believe me, I was doing you a favor. Uh, I love the comedy in these games. That cracks pot me up. you smashed belonged to Professor Ubier. Did it really? I thought the man had more taste. What's that you're drinking? I'm not sure. But I have a suspicion it might be urine. Glees can't expect a favorable criticism of his gallery when he served this muck. I wasn't going to waste any more breath talking to that pompous blimp. Maybe I could turn the situation to my advantage. And at the same time, get my revenge. Yeah, okay. So now we've got to mess with this guy. We've got to use the absinthe. One. I splashed a little absinthe into the glass and hoped he wouldn't notice the change of color. Did you put something... Uh, yeah, I did. Well, what do you think? Well, it's certainly an improvement over Gleaser's wine. In fact, I could grow to like it. Okay, so we're going to do it again. Allow me. Were those pots very valuable? The pots are insured, but not the Shelby. You've no idea how much that cost me. There was nothing in the case but styrofoam, but pasted on the side was... It was a label... Underneath the logo of Flying Bird were the words Condor Transglobal Mars. The rest of the label was missing. Pot had smashed. I wasn't going to waste my breath on that drunkard.
It was a label bearing the name Condor Transglobal. Go away. The packing case can it was a sturdy it was a sturdy packing it was a label bear I had no it was a machine Go away. It was the letter to Nico from that creep Lavino, sickening. It was the newspaper clipping referring to the imminent eclipse. Wrapped inside it was another small piece of paper. It was a bank statement for Ubier's account from an automatic telling machine. The last five withdrawals were for large amounts and all made in Marseille. It was beginning to make sense. Ubier had organized Nico's abduction. Ubier withdrew money from Marseille. Ubier was connected with Trans Global, who shipped their goods from a warehouse in Marseille. That's how the torn Transglobal label had once read. Marseille, not Mars. It wasn't much of a lead, but it was all I had. I set off immediately to catch the evening train. Off we go to Marseille docks. Where we have to deal with um, a dog first, it was I believe. Dawn when I arrived in so I traced fun. Condor Transglobal to a desolate dockside.
What's the big idea? I don't know. The dog went berserk for no apparent reason. He's trained to do that. The idea is to deter any would-be intruder. Oh, I get it. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Just remember, he's a trained attack dog. A killer. Hi, good morning. Do you know what time it is? No, I don't wear a watch. As my dad used to say, I'm not into time, man. Well, you're too early. What time is it, anyhow? The big hand's on the floor. Why aren't you in bed? I can explain everything. Never mind, I ain't that interested. Does that dog belong to you? Nah. He comes with the job. I just feed him every now and then. More then than now, I'd say. What's the dog's name? Twenty. It's unusual for a dog. It's his registration number. Security dog number twenty. What time do you open the gates? Seven. Do you mind if I hang out here till the docks open? Please yourself, but you'll have a long wait. It's Sunday, and tomorrow is the start of the national holiday. Everything is closed for a month. Well, wouldn't you just know it? Does number 20 have rabies? Nah, just a bad attitude. Like I said, he's a trained attack dog. They took him when he was a puppy and messed with his head to make him the way he is. Ever heard of Condor Transglobal? Sure. They have a warehouse here. Well, could I take a look? Not until after the holidays. Come back in a month. I have to make a delivery to Condor Transglobal. Where's your rig? Uh, about half a mile down the road. And you walked here? Jeez, are you some kind of nut? Nah, it was easy. I just put one foot in front of the other. Are you gonna let me make my delivery? Not without the paperwork. You get the papers, you make your delivery, and I get a fat backhander. I was getting nowhere with the story about being a trucker. Do you know what kind of business Condor's involved in? I'll pay to guard the gate. Their business is not of mine. I'm looking for a young woman. At the docks? What kind of woman do you have in mind? You don't understand. It's my girlfriend I'm trying to find. Well, I ain't seen her. And you should tell her the docks ain't no place for a young lady. They're dirty and they're dangerous. I'm certain my girlfriend was brought here when she was abducted. What? Your girl was kidnapped? Yeah. Struck down by an Indian with a poison dart. A poison dart, huh? I could tell he didn't believe me. I have these very exotic panties. Take them away, you pervert! Have you ever heard of Professor Oubier? Me? None of my friends are professors or anything like that. Can you imagine the tale this guy must tell his wife or whatever after he gets home from work? This weird American turned up. Started asking me loads of questions about the dog. Tried to make a delivery. Didn't have any paperwork. Then he shows me a pair of knickers. It's messed up. What the fuck? What's cooking? Beans. You know a man can live on nothing but beans. Not this one. Don't you ever get tired of eating beans? Sure I do. What do you take me for? And what's the alternative? Peas. I can't eat them too often, though. They play hell with my digestion. Have you ever considered changing your diet? What's wrong with beans and beer? You need me to tell you? You're pumping out enough methane here to fill a dirigible. This is the dart that the Indian shot at my girlfriend. Sheesh! That's pretty weird, but I don't see why you'd expect to find her here. Take a look at this letter. 
That's sick. Did you write it? Oh, no. No, it's a letter from my girlfriend's admirer. If I was you, I'd smack him in the mouth. Well, that's not my style, but thanks for the advice. I gotta go now, but I'll be back. Can't wait. The stick had a hook on one end. I figured it was a boat hook for hooking boats. I just knew that boat hook would be useful for something. As for the bottle, even if I couldn't find a use for it, I'd cleaned up the dock a little. Ouch! That's hot! The bottle was half filled with water. Maybe it would cool the cone down enough to touch it. Now I could see into the pipe which formed the chimney. bottle had blocked the chimney, and the hut was filling up with smoke. The packet was full of dog biscuits. Someone had once told me a piece of coal brought you luck. Who was I to argue with irrational superstition? Hey, 20. Come and get it, boy. I felt a slight twinge of conscience as I prepared to give the dog a dunking. It soon passed. As I'd expected, the dog could swim like a, well, like a dog.
The grill opened from the inside. The din must have drowned out the sound of my knocking. Maybe there was a way in up there. It was a duct from a ventilation fan. was a powerful fan. I couldn't reach the blades of the fan, which was just as well. If I'd stuck my fingers in there, I'd never be able to play guitar again. That did the trick. The fan clunked and shorted out as its blades were mashed by the boat hook. I break your arms. That bully needed to be taught a lesson. Garzak's already mad because we didn't get the stone. You give me any trouble, I'll tell him it was all your fault. Karzak? That must be his boss. Who is it? Is this Condor Transglobal? Nobody here. Go away. I'll give you five seconds to let me in or I'll bust down the door. Okay. I'm coming. He didn't sound too happy.
interesting thing I found was a small brass key. Among the paperwork which adorned the notice board was something which caught my eye. It was a delivery note from Condor Transglobal, and the address was Coromonte City. It was locked. All the crates were firmly sealed. The room was filled with transglobal crates. suspicions about what had happened to Nico. I waited for him to shoot me, but it didn't happen. Instead, he seemed to want to tell me something. Uh, what? What do you want? Uh, uh, he seemed excited, almost desperate. What did he want so bad? Hi. Uh, I'm not going to hurt you. Cuaramonte. Is that where you're from? Cuaramonte City? Cuaramonte! Cuaramonte! Okay, okay. What does this key unlock? Huh? Hey, you're Manacle. Who did this? That big thug? I'm gonna set you free, okay? The little guy had gone to ground amongst the stack of crates. Just in time. Interrupting the beam of light kept the doors from closing and stopped anyone from using the elevator. But what now? There. That would keep the doors from closing. Nothing happened. That was probably because the elevator was already on this floor. There was an arc-shaped scratch on the floor, as if a door had been opened in the nearby wall. There was an arc-shaped... My fingers traced the outline of a secret door in the wall. Then I found a small round stud, which was set flush to the surrounding wooden paneling. Just as I hoped, a secret room. Nico!
Will you look at this? It was a small statue of a kneeling figure in an ornate headdress. The head was hideous, with huge staring eyes set in a decomposing face. Hey, somebody's marketing Labano dolls. There. How are you feeling? Oh, thanks, Georges. How on earth did you find me? I knew Oubier had been in Marseille. But never mind about me. How about you tell me exactly what's going on, starting with that Mayan stone? I picked it up from one of Kazakh's men in Paris. I was expecting a consignment of narcotics. Drugs? Yes. The proof I needed to expose Kazakh's smuggling operation. I'd set it up to act as his courier, and once I had the proof, I planned to go straight to Inspector Mu. But instead of the dope I'd expected, they sent me that stone instead. And to find out more, I called Professor Oubier, who invited me to his mansion. At least, I thought it was Oubier. I don't get it. If Karzak's business is drugs, why is he so desperate to get his hands on that stone? Maybe it has some significance to the local people in Central America. It could be Kazakh's means of getting them to work for him. Anyway, we've got to get out of here. Nico, wait! I decided to keep the map. We can't use the elevator. If that thug Pablo is recovered, he'll be waiting for us. We've got to do something. Where does that door lead to? I'm not sure. Hopefully, the tape would... rose about six inches off the floor, and I said a silent prayer to whoever had discovered the power of hydraulics. What on earth are you doing? Trying to raise the statue so I can hook it. Is that really going to... I like to keep my... There wasn't much I could do with a pulley that didn't have any rope. It would be much easier to attach the rope to the... Wasn't much I could do with it. The statue looked way too heavy for me to move. It 
was too heavy for me to move on my own. It was too heavy. Okay. Tell Condor Transglobal exports Aztec and Mayan relics from Central America to Europe. But that's just a cover for the real business. Drug smuggling. What proof do you have? Nothing yet. Do you know where Condor is based? In Central America. A place called Cuaramonte. I saw that name on a docket downstairs. Tell me about this Karzak guy. Well, I saw him for only a few minutes, but he frightens me. I got the impression that Pablo was nervous when he was around too. His eyes, they're like a wild animal's, like a tiger. That's what scared me most about him. He looked so unpredictable and dangerous. Did you know Ubier's wife was a film star? No, I didn't know he was married. What happened to her? She died. In mysterious circumstances, apparently. How mysterious? I heard she was murdered, possibly by Ubier himself. A murderer, huh? André said he was something of a celebrity. Did I hear you refer to Inspector Moon? Yes, you remember him? Of course I do. But I thought he was dead. Oh no, he reappeared after the broken sword case had blown over. When he found out who was in with the Neo Templars, he went into hiding. Mu knew more than was good for him. Does he know about our involvement with the case? If he does, he's not telling. Still, he got a sudden promotion. Did that Indian guy mistreat you? Did he forget about the abduction, verbal threats and bondage? No. Well, what about the little guy? I don't think he knows where he is or what he's doing here. The big guy, Pablo, he brought Titipoco from the jungle. Titty what? Titi Poco. That's what I heard Pablo call the dwarf. Do you recognize this? Is that the dart which knocked me out? That's right. I kept it as a souvenir. Have you any idea who this little statue is supposed to be? I'm not very well acquainted with my deities, George. But whatever his name, he sure is ugly. I found these in your bag. Oh, they were a gift. I know, I read the note. God knows what was going through Andre's mind. I think that's quite plain enough. Look, the little guy downstairs was chained up with these. That must have been Pablo's doing. I don't blame him though. That little guy is dangerous. You're still sore about that poison dart? Of course I'm sore. Could you give me a hand to push this statue? What for? This, my dear, is our passport to freedom. If you say so, dear. Okay, push! <laughs> Great teamwork. Nice to be working with you again, Mr. Stobart. Nico, I have a great idea. George, where have you been? Never mind that. Do you have the Mayan stone? Maybe I have, but uh... Don't argue, André. Give the stone to George. Well, of course. If you say so, Nicole. Thank you so much, André. George, he told me you'd been kidnapped, my dear. I'm glad to see he was mistaken. Oh, but it was true. If it hadn't been for George, 
I wouldn't be here now. That's not finished yet. Karzak's thugs will be back for that stone, you can bet. The best lead that we have is Coromonte City. Coromonte? It's in Central America. That's where Uvie gets his artifacts. That's all we needed to know. Come on, George. Guaramonte, the traveler's rear entrance to Central America. Well, that's how it was translated in the brochure. We didn't know what we were looking for, but the offices of Condor Trans Global seemed a good place to start. Okay, so we've made it to Guaramonte hey, City. I don't see any cabs. Let's ask someone how to get to Cuaramonte City. Okay. Keep your eyes peeled for any sign of Condor Trans Global. Okay. So, we've made it to Central America. The port of Cuaramonte, apparently. Um, Nico's dressed like a communist. George is dressed like an American on holiday. Um... So, I think I'm going to stop the stream here. I will come back tomorrow and play some more Broken Sword. Sh uh, what's it called? The Smoking Mirror. This one. Um, obviously, we've just started the game, so we've just got out of Paris. Quite a few bits to do. We'll get through it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Um, I will be back tomorrow, hopefully. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Cheers, guys.